some fun! It's the top ten about nothing. Now, are you just saying you want to have fun, or do you really want to have fun? I really want to have fun. I'm just saying I want to have some fun. Welcome to WatchMojo.com. Hello! And today we're counting down our picks for the top ten episodes of Seinfeld. Get out! For this list, we're taking aim at those episodes of Seinfeld that are most influential, most iconic, and most funny. Serenity now! Now, find your favorite booth at Monk's and let's dig in. Now let's push this giant ball of oil out the window. <laughs> How could they not notice it? Because it's a little mint. It's a junior mint. Number 10. The Junior Mint. It's chocolate, it's peppermint, it's delicious. Self-centered as ever, Jerry can't remember his date's name and tries everything to figure it out. It, it rhymes with a female body part. What is it? Mulva? Elaine's got the hots for her slimmed down ex, Roy. This is, uh, you really lost weight. <laughs> But the episode's title comes from an incident when Jer and Kramer are observing Roy's surgery. And Kramer's brought along some junior mints as a snack. Kramer, stop it! <laughs> However, even with all that going on, our favorite part is when Jerry finally realizes his lady friend's name. Number nine, the bubble boy. Doctors say he has to live in a plastic bubble. Can you imagine that? A bubble. A bubble? A bubble. Yes, a bubble. <laughs> After learning of his illness, Jerry begrudgingly agrees to visit one of his fans on his way to a cabin with Elaine, George, and Susan. Excuse me. Uh... Oh, here. <laughs> <laughs> but Jerry gets lost. Hijinks ensue as he and Elaine stop at a diner and give another fan a signed picture. Nothing's finer than being in your diner. <laughs> <laughs> While George plays an ill-fated game of Trivial Pursuit with the Bubble Boy. I'm so sorry, it's the Moops. The correct answer is the Moops. And where's Kramer? Oh, just burning down the cabin. My Cubans. <laughs> Number eight. The limo. Oh, I'm telling you, the jig is up. It was a bad jig to begin with. We never should have started this jig. It was a good jig. It was a bad jig, a terrible, terrible jig. As risky and edgy today as it was when it premiered in 1992, this episode sees George pretending to be a man named O'Brien so he and Jerry can snag a limo ride home from the airport. I'll get the car and I'll bring it around front. Thank you very much. <laughs> Dylan? Go. <clears throat> Yada yada yada, turns out O'Brien is a high-profile neo-Nazi who's supposed to be on his way to give a speech near Madison Square Garden. And the Jews steal our money through the Zionist-occupied government and use the black man to bring drugs into our oppressed white minority communities. You're not gonna open with that, are you? Guns, rioting, and George screams follow. Jane's topless. Number seven. Yo, yo, ma. The Hamptons. Boutros, Boutros, golly. This episode changed the meaning of the word shrinkage. It shrinks? <laughs> like a frightened turtle. <laughs> While in the Hamptons to visit their friend's breathtaking newborn, Jerry, Elaine, and Kramer see George's new girlfriend topless. Nice rack. Elaine's confused by a cute doctor's choice of words. Yeah, he really is breathtaking. <laughs> Kramer's arrested for poaching lobsters, and George is caught with his pants down. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Classic, comical, and it spawned a catchphrase. What more could you want? I was in the pool! I was in the pool! No, he's just a guy, but I really liked him. Number six, the boyfriend. With all these ball clubs flying around all season, wouldn't you think there'd be a plane crash? <laughs> Jerry strikes up a bromance with Keith Hernandez, but gets jealous when his idol starts dating Elaine. Wait a minute. Are you jealous of him or are you jealous of me? <laughs> Kramer and Newman won't shut up about their hatred of the Met star. I hate Keith. Hate him! 
I despise him. Which culminates in a perfect JFK style explanation. That is one magic loogie. <laughs> But our fave quote of this two-parter comes in George's storyline. After lying to the unemployment agency about his job prospects with Vandalay Industries, George is caught with his pants down again. And you want to be my latex salesman. Anything happens here, can I count on you? <laughs> Number five. The Chinese restaurant. We decide to go at it. <laughs> yeah, I want to get into a rumble. This simple concept changed how sitcoms were written, but it was initially rejected by the NBC brass. Jerry, George, and Elaine stop for dinner on their way to a movie. I can't have popcorn for dinner. <laughs> hot dog. We have to eat. That's it. Well, they have hot dogs there. Oh, movie hot dogs. I'd rather lick the food off the floor. If any episode proves Seinfeld is a show about nothing, it's this one. You know, we're living in a society. Sure, there are shenanigans. Should I do it, George? For 50 bucks? I'll put my face in this soup and blow. But similar to the later episode, The Parking Garage, the crew ends up essentially in the same place as when they begin. Seinfeld, fall! <laughs> we take out our drivers, we tee up and... Number four, the marine biologist. Sailing up into the sky, holds there for a moment and then... <laughs> a favorite of Seinfeld himself, this episode has George pretending to be a marine biologist. Oh, I, I just got back from a trip to the Galapagos Islands. I was living with the turtles. Elaine fighting an angry Russian author who likes throwing stuff out windows, and Kramer playing golf at the beach. Ridiculous? Obviously. I stink! <laughs> but it proves the show can take any concept. Is anyone here a marine biologist? No matter how silly, and make it funny. The sea was angry that day, my friends. <laughs> like an old man trying to send back soup in a deli. <laughs> but we gotta say, the greatest payoff in this episode is George's closing monologue. So I reached my hand in, <laughs> felt around, and pulled out the obstruction. What is that, a title list? <laughs> a hole in one, huh? Number three, the puffy shirt. You're gonna be the first pirate. <laughs> but I don't wanna be a pirate. Seinfeld picks apart personality quirks with skill, this time inventing the low talker. What's that? Excuse me? In this case, the low talker is Kramer's girlfriend, who just so happens to be a fashion designer interested in starting a new trend. When Jerry unknowingly agrees to wear one of her creations on the Today Show, things don't go according to plan. For anybody. Some of those heckles are really uncalled for. A vast ye matey? What the hell does that mean? Including George, the new hand model, which is the episode's subplot. You look like a complete idiot! I wouldn't wipe my egg. <laughs> Number two, the soup Nazi. Jamalaya. <laughs> Even if you never watched Seinfeld, you know one phrase. No soup for you! <laughs> While Jerry and his girlfriend are busy using baby talk, You're so the gang finds a joint that serves the city's best soup. Oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> but there's a catch. Okay, so you hold out your money, speak your soup in a loud, clear voice, step to the left and receive. So right. Elaine doesn't buy into the soup Nazi's rules and gets herself banned from his store, leading her on a crusade to bring him down. Elaine, let the man make his soup. Don't make me hurt you, Jerry. And thanks to some trouble with an armoire, Kramer and Street Toughs, she does it. You're through, soup Nazi. <laughs> no more soup for you. <laughs> <laughs> Before we reveal which pick we think is the most sponge-worthy, here are a few honorable mentions. Well, you hold it in like that, you can cause a lot of damage to your bladder. That's what happens to truck drivers. Well, they hold it in all the time, and eventually it starts to come out involuntarily. All right. My name is George. I'm unemployed and I live with my parents. I'm Victoria, hi. The whole
really sorry. You can stuff your sorries in a sack, mister. Did you get that one? It's an expression. <laughs> My mother had a glamour magazine. I started leaving <laughs> Number one. Glamour? The contest. So what did she do? First she screams, George, what are you doing? My God! Breaking barriers as always, the writers of Seinfeld somehow made masturbation inoffensive and appropriate for prime time. George's mother, in her first appearance, discovers George treating his body like a, well, we'll let her tell you. I come home and find my son treating his body like it was an amusement park. <laughs> so the four friends make a bet to see who can go the longest without self-gratification. I'm out. <laughs> With virgins, Kennedys, hot nurses, and naked ladies running wild. This Emmy-winning episode proves that, in the world of sitcoms, Seinfeld is the master of his domain. I am king of the county. <laughs> you? Lord of the manor. Do you agree with our list? No! No! No, no, no! Thank you. <laughs> what are your favorite episodes of Seinfeld? Yeah, well, I can't have this hanging over my head. It's bad mojo. <laughs> For more hilarious top tens published every day. High five. Be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. On the flip side. David, um, I... Don't leave me hanging.